AF supports a table structure that allows you to put data that is just more suitable in a table. And that would typically be things that don't change very often, like things that need to be looked up uh, or things that are stored in a relational database. And in fact, what you can do with this table structure is, structure is you can actually import it from a relational database, or you can link it to a relational database. Which means that, uh, you know, at that point, now you've got uh, the ability to reach out to some third party, to some external data source, and bring that into AF. So here's some examples of tables. As you can see, we define these columns and then populate this. We define the columns in this definition here. We support all different value types, etc. And then we populate this. And we can either populate it by hand or import from a relational database. We can also link to a relational database. So in this video we're going to go over how you define this table. Later on we're going to discuss how you would make use of the elements in this table or make use of the uh, the values that are stored in this table. We have something called a table lookup data reference type that we can make use of. So we'll go through that later on. Now, as I said we can re read external tables. We can read that uh, on an as-needed basis. So it's, if it's an external table, it's not something we're going to duplicate in AF. It's something we simply reach out to when requested. So that's not an issue. And there's also an option when you set up this table to specify a cache interval refresh rate. And the refresh rate is simply going to uh, specify in seconds how often we should go out to retrieve data from that linked table. Now that's there for you know, scaling purposes because there are cer certain tables that uh, the size is going to become an issue because this is something that's loaded in memory. So there is a practical limit to the size of any linked table. And also, uh, given the size, there's going to be a practical limit to the cache interval here, to that refresh rate. So how do we create these tables? Well, let's just go out to our own sample database. I'll go to the OSIsoft plant. I'll create a brand new table. For this, we're going to go into the library. And within library, we go into the tables option. From here, we just create a new table. And uh, at this point I can go ahead and define the table, you know, one row at a time, uh, along with the general settings. Now another way I could have done this is over here on tables, just choose new table. And now as you can see it's the same four tabs, it's just a different way to do this. So for example, let's say I'm, I'd like to keep track of some properties of the uh, components I'm working with. Now right now there is no table to populate, so we don't see anything under there. But if I go ahead and start defining some rows and columns, or I should say columns, uh, then we will have something that we can make use of. So let's say that this has got a material ID. That material ID is a string. So there we are. We're done with that. Let's add another attribute. This attribute would be, how about the heat capacity? Now, as you're doing this, you get to order these you know, by uh, using this user interface over here. If I want that to appear first in my table, I'll do that. And finally, let's go with density. And for density, actually for density, uh, that can be something that we express as a uh, as an actual uh, double or an int. Let's go with that, probably same for the heat capacity. So that looks good. I'll go ahead and populate this, and this is doing it by hand. Now remember, you can import this from a relational database if you have that available. So let's say my material ID, WX12000, 1.6 on the heat capacity, and it looks like I set that up as an improper data type. If you remember, I set that up as an in 16 No problem. Let's go back into the table definition, and let's change that from and in 16 into a double. Or actually, let's go with a single precision reel. There we go. Now we can enter 1.6. And for the density, I'll go with 2100. And we could just continue on. So there's our table. It's been defined there. Uh, now, later on, I'm going to go into the details of how you actually would make use of that. We would make use of that within these elements. Uh, I can create a data reference that points to a table lookup. So if we take a look at our existing attributes, one of the attribute types is this uh, table lookup. And that's how we're going to be exploiting this later on.